I'd like us just to, can you turn this down a bit now? Because I've got a louder voice than everybody else. <laughs> I'd like us just to read just three verses tonight uh, from the book of Hebrews. Not preaching on the passage, but from a phrase within the passage. And it's a very well-known chapter in chapter one. But we'll read the first, well, we'll read the first four verses. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Let us just pray a moment. Father, we seek your help as we come around your word. Lord, I realize tonight, Lord, I'm just the, the preacher, the communicator, but Lord, I need the Holy Spirit to speak through me tonight. And I pray that, Lord, our hearts will be open to you tonight and that, Father God, you would do that work that only the Holy Spirit can do and change hearts and lives, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, throughout today, and especially this morning in our service of remembrance, we've been remembering the sacrifice of others, those who've given their lives for freedom, for civil freedom, for religious freedom, and indeed for our liberty. We've thought very deeply and had an act of remembrance and a two minute silence this morning to remember those who've given their lives in two world wars and in other international conflicts. And of course, there are many today who are still giving their lives in war. We think especially of the people in Ukraine and indeed Russia, because families are losing sons who've been conscripted to fight in the war. And as we have been thinking today of those who sorrow over the loss of a loved one, We've also think today of those who've carried physical wounds, carried emotional scars and pain and trauma day by day. And I'm sure that in our hearts, we have prayed that they would know God's comfort, God's grace and God's help in their time of need. And how important it is that we do pray for them that they might be able to say, my help cometh from the Lord who made the heaven and in the earth. And also it's been right that we give thanks to God for the freedom and the liberties that we have. It's not something that we should take for granted as a people and as a nation. And it's important that we go on praying that those freedoms are maintained and that the plans and the schemes of evil and ungodly men will be stopped and brought to nothing. As Jesus taught his disciples to pray, deliver us from evil. And we need to pray for our own nation more than ever. But we thank God for those who've given sacrifice down the years for these things. But I want to remind us again tonight 
of the greatest sacrifice of all. And that sacrifice was the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary for the salvation of sinners. And our text that I want to use tonight is one little phrase that's found in verse 3 of what we have read. And it's speaking of Christ when it says, when he had by himself purged our sins. When he had by himself purged our sins. And in the time that remains tonight, I want us to consider and to think upon this, the greatest of all sacrifices, that of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. And first of all, I want you to notice the necessity of that sacrifice. Because in our little phrase, it speaks of our sins. When he had by himself purged our sins. And those two little words, our sins, shows you the absolute necessity of Christ's sacrifice upon the cross. Just as men have laid down their lives in World War II because of the evils of Hitler at that time, so Christ laid down his life because of the awful evil of our sins and the awful evil of people's sins. The Bible says that Christ died for our sins. Over the last two years, we heard a lot about the spread of coronavirus and how quickly it spread into people's lives. But you know, the Bible reminds us that through the fall of our first parents in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, that sin has spread throughout the entire human race. In fact, the word of God says, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. And therefore tonight, every single one of us, this preacher included, all of us are guilty of evil in the sight of God. The Bible tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes, for there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and that sinneth not. Let me read that verse again. There is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and that sinneth not. In fact, we're all guilty of sin. We're all sinners by nature and by practice. And that means we've all, every one of us, broken the law of God. And every one of us are guilty of breaking the law of God in thought and word and deed. And the Bible says that sin is the transgression of the law. It says that all have sinned and come short, fell short of the glory of God. And that means because of our sin by nature and by practice, that you and I in ourselves could never please God. Folks, we can never merit the favor of Almighty God. We've all fallen short of the standard of God. And the Bible says that we're all as an unclean thing and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rights. The Bible also makes it clear that our sins is deeply grieving to God because God who is holy and without sin 
our sin is deeply offensive to God. In fact, in the book of Habakkuk, when the prophet speaks of God, he says, thou art of pure eyes to behold evil and cannot look on iniquity. My word, God's eyes are so pure that he cannot look upon iniquity. You see, our sin has grieved God, but not only has it grieved God, it separated us from God. Just as it drove Adam and Eve out of the garden of Eden, you know, where before, before they sinned, they lived in fellowship, they lived in harmony with God. But sin came and destroyed that fellowship, destroyed that harmony with God, and as a result, the Bible tells us they were separated from God. They were driven out of the Garden of Eden. And you know, folks, tonight our sin has separated us from God, our creator, from God, our maker, and our sin leads to death. Not only physical death, but eternal punishment in hell itself, the lake of fire for the judgment of sin. The Bible says when sin, when it is finished, brings death. It says the wages of sin is death. And there's a little verse in the book of Jude, right towards the end of the Bible. There's only one chapter in Jude. But in verse 7, it says this, As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, in a similar manner to these, having given them over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Jude warns that the ultimate penalty of sin is separation from God, eternal punishment from God in the lake of fire. The end of sin for all mankind. You know, friends, on this Remembrance Sunday, please realize that it's because of our sin, it's because of the effects and ruin of sin in our lives and throughout this world that Christ, the Son of God, had to die because our sins necessitated the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. So the necessity of Christ's sacrifice. But secondly tonight, notice the uniqueness of Christ's sacrifice. Because here the writer to the Hebrews, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, when he had by himself, Purged our sins when he had by himself. Notice those two words by himself. And you know, those two words prove to us that the sacrifice of Christ was unique. There was no other sacrifice like it. You see, only the sacrifice of Jesus, the Son of God, can save us from our sins and from the ruin of our sins. Peter, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, said this, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given amongst men, whereby we must be saved. And the word of God in the scriptures makes it very clear that no good work of man no right or sacrifice of man, no religious ceremony of man can save us from our sins. The Bible says that salvation is not of works, lest any man should boast. So you know tonight, friends, this church can't save us. Our baptism can't save us. Our communion can't save us. Our confirmation 
can't save us. Our good works can't save us. Our good deeds to our neighbours cannot save us. Folks, we need to understand tonight that only the Lord Jesus Christ can save us from our sins. Only the Lord Jesus Christ, as our text says, can purge away our sins. When John the Baptist saw Jesus Christ coming, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And I want you to see tonight, friends, the uniqueness of Christ, the uniqueness of the sacrifice of Christ who left heaven's glory and the worship of angels to come into this world. And he went freely and willingly and lovingly to the cross of Calvary for sinners. He who was without sin became sin for us. He suffered and bled and died on that cross of Calvary. And you know, the Bible tells us these wonderful words in the book of Isaiah. It says this, he, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement, hallelujah, praise the Lord. He says, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Friends, I want to say with the shedding of the sinless blood of Christ, he satisfied God's justice. He paid the penalty for our sin in full. When he cried out on the cross, it is finished. He made a way for you and me to be saved and to be delivered from our sins. And the Bible says this is a faithful saying worthy of all expectation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The hymn writer wrote this, there was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in all the uniqueness of the sacrifice of Christ. And you know, to, to avail of this salvation that we find in him, that, you know, tonight, if you come and confess your need, as a lost sinner, and you come before the Lord in repentance, and you trust in Christ, trust in him personally for your salvation. The Bible says that just shall live by faith. And the Bible says, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. It's by faith in Christ that you say, and tonight you can receive this so great salvation. Because whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you see, the writer to the Hebrews trusted in Christ personally as Savior. Look at our text. When he had by himself purged our sins. And you know, tonight, if you personally put your trust in the Lord, you can know this wonderful salvation. Let's look at thirdly then at the outcome of Christ's sacrifice. Notice that word when he himself had purged, purged our sins. And that word purge means to cleanse. It means to make clean. And so by faith in Christ our Savior, all our sins can be washed away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All our sins away from God's seeing eye. And our sin sick soul, because remember, we started off by talking about the necessity for Christ's sacrifice. Our sins, but our sin sick soul can be made clean and acceptable to a holy God. And tonight, if we repent of our sin and trust in Christ as Savior, the Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanseth us from all sins. 
Hallelujah. In fact, the Bible says, for I will be merciful, God says, to their unrighteousness and to their sins and their iniquities. I will remember no more. Glory to God. Friends, that gets me absolutely thrilled to this. Their sin, I'm reading that verse again. Hallelujah. God says, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And praise God, God can do that for you tonight. Hallelujah. He can pardon all of your sins and forgive you forever. You know, when our sins are forgiven, we're not just pardoned, we're not just forgiven, but we're restored to fellowship and to harmony with God. That which man broke at the fall in the Garden of Eden, and yet, friends, we can be reconciled to God and become a member of God's family. And we're brought out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's most marvelous light. Friends, this is the best news in Leyland tonight. Hallelujah. The Bible says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You know, think of World War II. You know, when Hitler was defeated and the war ended, there was a great uniting of people and countries that had been separated with the awful ravages of that war. And you know, friends, when we come to Christ, that great wall of separation between us and God is removed. Hallelujah. And in Christ, we become benefactors of his grace, saved from a lost eternity in hell, and sure and certain of a home in heaven that we've been singing so much about tonight, quite interestingly enough. Inheritors of everlasting life. You know, later on in the book of Hebrews, we read these words. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. And thank God tonight, in heaven there is no sin. Hallelujah. In heaven, tears are wiped away. In heaven, there is no darkness, no sorrow, no sickness, no death, no war, no battles but everlasting peace. Hallelujah. And you know, tonight, I want to just ask you, as you sat in this meeting, have you this hope in your heart? If you were to die tonight, God forbid, but if you were, would you be absent from the body and present with the Lord? Well, you can have that hope tonight. If you come, and place your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. When he had by himself purged our sins, and whatever your sin has been, you can know them purged, cleansed away by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. And so tonight at the end of this Remembrance Sunday, I commend and present Jesus to you because he's your only hope of salvation. But if you will trust him tonight, your life can be changed. Your soul can be washed from sin. And tonight, you can be born again of the Spirit of God. Not something we can do. As I've said, this church can't do a thing to get you to heaven. But Jesus can. Let's just bow our heads. Father, we thank you for the greatest sacrifice of all. Lord, we realize the necessity of that salvation because it was our sins. We realize, Lord, the uniqueness of that salvation because Christ had to do that alone. Only Christ could, could qualify 
the sinless Son of God, to deal with our sin. And tonight, Lord, as we're in your presence, Lord, we realize that this sacrifice can have a wonderful outcome for our lives. That, Lord, we can be changed by the power of God. Father, I pray that if there's someone tonight that, Lord, in this gathering does not yet know you in a personal way, that tonight they will come to you and say, Lord Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner. I realize, Lord, it was necessary for you to die for my sins. But, oh God, I confess that I'm a sinner and I repent of that sin. And I trust in your sacrificial death on Calvary's cross. Thank you for dying for me. Come and change my heart. Deal with my sin and make me into a new creation. In Jesus' name. We're going to sing an old hymn. And these are the words, there is a fountain filled with blood. 